And it's this time of the week again, Linux and open source news time. So this week we have the Ubuntu team sharing their vision and their plans for the Ubuntu desktop. We have the NVIDIA BIOS lock being broken and bypassed, which could mean some good thing for free and open source drivers on Linux for NVIDIA GPUs. And we have Azahi Linux dropping a fully conformant OpenGL GPU driver. And I'm dropping this fully conformant segue to our sponsor. This video is sponsored by Squarespace and most of you probably already know about it, but if you don't, all you have to remember is that it's your all-in-one solution to build and publish your own website. Even if you don't know anything about how to build a website and you don't know how to code, Squarespace just lets you get started in no time. You pick a template, you drag and drop the various blocks you want, you customize them with the various colors and themes, and you're good to go. And when you want to move forward and enrich your website with a bunch of other features, you can add a video gallery, an online store with online payments, or even a members-only area, and a lot more. And if you need a logo or you need a domain name, Squarespace can also help you with that. So if you need a new website and you don't know how to get started, just click the link in the description below or head over to squarespace.com slash the Linux experiment and you'll get 10% off your first purchase. So the Ubuntu team shared an interesting post about their vision for the Ubuntu desktop as a whole. They start by stating Ubuntu's important position for the Linux desktop, being the most popular distro for devs, according to a Stack Overflow survey, the most used distro for gaming, if you add up every Ubuntu version in the Steam survey, and they also have at least 6 million monthly active users. They defined the values of the Ubuntu desktop and expressed that they wanted to move away from shipping a few features each release and instead focus on shipping building blocks that are related to each other or related to a wider goal, a vision further down the line. So what's the vision then? Well, it is unclear. They talked about the values mostly, like choice, quality, support, enjoyment, performance, privacy and security, or seamless integration. And they listed a few things that they're working on for each, like having full disk encryption as an option in the installer, bringing NetPlan to the Ubuntu desktop to make it easier to manage Ubuntu fleets, or new permission prompts for apps that require punctual permissions, or the new graphical app store they are planning for Ubuntu 23.10. They also mentioned the new Ubuntu Core desktop, which is an immutable distro using snaps to provide their applications. So I'm not sure I'm seeing a grand strategy here, but it's difficult to create one of those when you don't fully control all the software. And since Ubuntu is still being based on GNOME, they don't have full control over what features are coming and what might be removed that they want to use. Still, it's good to see that they have a plan. It's a criticism I have leveled against Ubuntu for a while now that they kind of feel directionless and you don't feel like they know where they're going themselves. So them defining the outlines of what they want to be is pretty cool. Now, one of the main reasons open source driver support for relatively recent NVIDIA GPUs is so spotty and frankly bad is because NVIDIA uses checks for certain BIOS signatures to ensure people don't flash weird BIOSes onto their graphics cards. But this also means that you can't really take advantage of all the power of the GPU if you can't pass these checks, which open source drivers pretty much can't. But this BIOS lock has now been broken by tools developed for Windows, which let users flash new BIOS images on their NVIDIA GPUs, raise power limits on older GPUs like the 900 series, and control voltages and fan curves. So this work might end up being useful to the Nouveau driver developers to at least understand how to defeat or better how to pass these boot checks. And finally, to get access to all the power and the higher clock speeds for recent NVIDIA GPUs, because as long as you haven't passed these checks, the GPUs run at their boot up clock speeds, which are really, really low. It's still a legal gray area though. Now I really hope they will be able to learn something from these tools, but apparently for now the code used to defeat that lock hasn't been made public, and even if it had, you probably could not use it as is, it's probably illegal to do so. But you could at least look at it and understand how the BIOS lock works, 
or how to bypass it and this could make its way into an open source driver for Linux. Still on NVIDIA, they have now released the source code for their developer toolkit, NVAPI, on GitHub. This should help a few projects, like DXVK NVAPI, to take advantage of NVIDIA-specific features for these GPUs. Some libraries are still provided as binary files though, but it is still pretty good to see NVIDIA opening up more stuff. And look, yeah, they're still a terrible company with very bad commercial practices and a really bad track record for open source, but they look like they're starting to really be more open to this kind of stuff, which I guess is good. Now, still on the topic of drivers, Asahi Linux, the distro that is steadily reverse engineering drivers for Apple Silicon Macs, now has an OpenGL ES 3.1 conformant driver. It officially conforms to the specifications made by the Kronos Group, which is the entity that manages OpenGL. And so this driver passes the entire test suite, which is something that can't be said about macOS, for example, because they don't support OpenGL and they don't have a conformant driver. So a team of volunteers basically has made something that Apple decided or could not do it themselves. Now this support works for M1 and M2 CPUs and the update is already available to all Asahi Linux users or on Fedora Asahi Remix as well. The driver will of course be upstreamed in the future so any version of the Linux kernel can have it but it still needs the Apple DRM kernel driver to be merged as well so it's a little ways off. So what this means is that M1 and M2 Max will finally have a solid GPU driver for Linux at least, which is really good. And if you're interested in Asahi or Fedora Asahi or how Linux runs on these new devices, uh, I'll have a video about this next month. Now on the KDE side of things this week, they have decided to go with tap to click being enabled by default for touchpads on Plasma 6, something that I think is a really good choice. They also have brought the usual improvements to the yet unreleased version of Plasma, like text being copied in X Wayland apps, staying in the clipboard even after you close the app, a rewritten printer settings panel to be more coherent with the current style of settings, and better looking icons in Dolphin when using fractional scaling. KDE Gear 23.08 was also released. In this update to most of KDE's apps, there's Calendar, now called Mercuro since it doesn't just handle calendars anymore. Not a huge fan of that new name though, really not descriptive at all. They are also planning to add email capabilities to that app, making it into the new KDE Personal Information Manager to replace the old Kmail suite. Tokodon, the Mastodon client, got a redesign looking a lot better, and the timeline is now a lot smoother as well. It also now has tools to manage the users and the instances you want to federate with if you host your own Mastodon instance. Kate, the text editor, now supports GLSL as a programming language and includes the option for a QML language server when using Qt6. The screenshot manager also now lets you select annotations you've made more easily to move them around and generally change how you're editing your screenshots. And as per GNOME, the developers finally shared the porting guide for extensions to work in GNOME 45, as this version moves to ESM and will necessitate all extensions to be at least repackaged or partially rewritten. It's shared a month before the release of the new version, let's hope that is enough time for extension developers. There's also a new GNOME app called ASCII Draw, letting you draw shapes, diagrams or charts in ASCII style with a lot of pre-made shapes and fonts and lines you can use. Parabolic, the video downloader, can now split chapters of a video into different files and it can also use sponsor block to avoid downloading a sponsored mention in a video. And I truly, truly hope that this is the last time GNOME developers break everything extensions related settle on a freaking API for those things and improve it instead of recreating it or breaking it with every release. And Budgie also got a new release, version 10.8. It's still GNOME based, although Budgie 11 will probably move away from that in the future. This is the first release that includes Magpie, which is Budgie's own window manager and future Wayland compositor. This lets them break away from Mutter, which is the GNOME compositor, that required a lot of work to adapt to the changes Budgie makes, 
especially for X11 support. So Magpie is a soft fork of Mutter from GNOME 43, not 44, and is in a temporary state to cater to Budgie's X11 support. When Budgie 11 drops, a new code base will be used that will drop X11 support to go all in on Wayland. On top of that, Budgie 10.8 brings more details to the password prompts to let you know what app actually opened the prompt, which is really good. You can now control power profiles in the battery indicator, and the system tray is now based on the status notifier specification, which means tray icons should look better and should scale better with high DPI displays. The default theme now uses a very light green instead of blue, and the app menu was reorganized in terms of how apps are placed in various categories. The trash applet, which previously was third party, is now part of the desktop officially as well. And it is cool to see Budgie getting some more updates. I personally think it will be more interesting when Budgie 11 drops with its own style and its own applications, and it won't be based on GNOME anymore, because what I want to see for Linux is desktops that aren't just slight or even medium or major modifications of each other. I want to see stuff that has its own stack, its own vision. So stuff like Cosmic, KDE, Gnome, Unity, maybe Budgie in the future. Stuff that isn't really based on the exact same technologies everywhere. Okay, now let's finish this with the gaming news. First, we have reports of people being banned on Apex Legends when playing on Linux. This game uses the easy anti-cheat anti -cheat software, which is supposed to be supported on Linux. But some Linux players are still apparently getting banned. This had already happened early this year and most bans were overturned by EA. But this time it looks like the bans are sticking. EA answered to a lot of comments saying that no, they did take the correct action in banning these accounts. And this really sucks, like you can't really have your cake and eat it too. If you turn down support for Linux in the easy anti-cheat services portal, you check that checkbox, you're shipping that file, then you can't ban people for playing on the platform that you support. And if you want that verified compatibility check on the Steam Deck, then just as well, you can't ban people who are playing your game on the Steam Deck. So yeah, it's probably just EA doing more EA things with problems in internal communications or whatever, it, it sucks. Now for Roblox players though, it looks like you're going to be able to play on Linux again through Wine. Developers have been working to update the game since the new client broke the game on Linux and they shared a screenshot of that running on Manjaro. They will make an official announcement when everything is ready to be published to the stable version of the game, but if you or your kids enjoy Roblox, then it's all good news. I never played this game, it kind of looked like a way to make kids spend their parents' money, but I guess the whole sandbox, thousands of minigames can be appealing. And it looks like the Steam Deck now has 11,000 games officially playable. That's 7,254 with the playable rating and 3,753 with the verified rating, plus 3,296 marked as unsupported so they don't run at all. As a reminder, this doesn't cover every single game, some haven't been reviewed yet, and of course some titles marked playable or verified still have some big problems that Valve might not have seen during testing but that's still an enormous amount of games. And it probably makes the Steam Deck into the console with the biggest library probably of all time, especially if you start including emulation, which isn't officially supported games, but it's still an enormous number of titles that you can play on this thing. Probably the best value for money if you're looking for a handheld right now. But if what you're looking for is a PC, then there's today's sponsor, Tuxedo. They make laptops and desktops that ship with Linux pre-installed, which means that all the hardware has been picked specifically because it runs well with Linux. And if there were some compatibility quirks, they actually develop fixes and patches that they upstream so that everyone else can have access to them, which is really nice. They have a huge range of devices from the smallest Ultrabooks, Nux, giant workstations, gaming laptops, like desktop replacements, whatever. They are all super customizable in terms of internals, but also in terms of the keyboard layout. You can have your own logo on the lid, you can change how the super key looks and stuff like that. And all the laptops can be opened, they can be repaired and they can be upgraded, including the RAM, the SSD, the battery and sometimes even the wireless card. 
So if you need a new computer and you plan to run Linux on it and you also want to support Linux's development by buying from a company that actually develops drivers for Linux, then click the link in the description below and get yourself a Tuxedo PC. They're really, really good. So thanks everyone for watching the video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, don't hesitate to like, to subscribe, to turn on notifications, to write a comment. And if you didn't like it, there's always that thumbs down button and you can tell me why in the comments as well. And if you really enjoy the channel, there are plenty of links in the description of the video as well. You can click them and show your support if you want to. You know how all of this works. So thanks everyone for watching and I guess you'll see me in the next one. Bye.